When we last left off with Red Hood and the Outlaws, Artemis and Red Hood did a great job working together, but Bizarro was injured and he was thought that he was going to die. It's time for us to find out, will he survive? In our last video, the Outlaws faced off against one of Artemis' old sisters in the arms of Akilla. With her controlling the bow of Ra, Artemis was forced to decide which side she was going to be fighting for when Akilla turned the bow on mankind. In the end, the Outlaws managed to stop her, but at the cost of Bizarro, speeding up the process that was killing himself. You see, Bizarro is a clone, and they have a shelf life. After having escaped the events of Karak, the Outlaws turned to the only place that they knew that could keep Bizarro safe, Ma Gun's home for the criminally infirmed. As Artemis wipes the sweat from his forehead, she says that Bizarro is going to need to be in a hospital at the very least. And Ma Gun tells her that they're going to do their best for the circumstances that they have. They are international war criminals now. Artemis, Red Hood, and Bizarro. While Bizarro sleeps with his favorite doll, Pop Pop, Jason holds his hand, telling him, Hang in there, buddy. Everything's gonna be fine. Artemis asks, Why would you lie to him at a time like this? But Ma Gun tells him that if what they want to do is their banter, take it at least to the living room. She was a surgeon in the MASH unit during the Korean War so she knows her way around a human body. Though she's no xenobiologist, she can tell one thing, and that's that Bizarro's cells are deteriorating at a rapid rate. So let him rest. A short while later, Jason says Black Mask told him that Bizarro had a shelf life. They knew that he was going to die. And Artemis places her hand on Jason's shoulder, telling him, no, it doesn't. It's never easy to watch a friend pass, no matter the circumstances. But before they could go any further, Ma Gun comes into the room and says that they have a problem. The TV continues its report that the escaped Arkham inmate, Solomon Grundy, is rampaging through the annual street fair in the old G-Town neighborhood of Gotham. Jason cocks his gun, stating that it's only five blocks away, and Artemis leans down to give Bizarro a kiss and whispers, May the goddess watch over you, my friend. I'll see you soon. A few moments later in the fair, Solomon grabs a water tank, shouting, Solomon Grundy! Suddenly, there's a tap on his back, and Artemis jumps in, kicking him, shouting, Artemis! Jason tells Artemis to be careful. Do not underestimate this one. And Artemis says, please. Even his. But before she can finish her sentence, Solomon throws a control unit hitting Artemis. And he shouts, Solomon Grundy. Jason tells him, I thought you were your brother Wendell. Well, you should probably get a name tag. Solomon then punches into Jason, knocking him through the attractions. Meanwhile, back at the lab, Ma Gun continues reading Bizarro a story. When he wakes up, he groans, stating, Friends need... Red's need. Ma Gun asks if he can hear them from here, and Bizarro tells her, Me hear everything. All the time. Ma Gun places her hand on him, saying that he knows that he's sick. If he's to leave now, he won't make it back. He gets up from the table, grabbing his suit, telling her, Yes, me know, but friend's more important. Bizarro then flies off, breaking through the wall, and Ma Gun sighs, telling him, There was a perfectly good door not five feet away. As she sees letters getting scattered to the ground, she notices one for Jason and she asks, what is Faye doing? Back at the fair, Solomon grabs Jason by the leg and he slams him into the ground. As he gets back up though, Solomon rips a fire hydrant from the ground and holds it above him. This will kill him, Jason has no powers. As Solomon gets ready to swing down, a force shoots by, knocking him back, and Jason yells, Bizarro, stop! Bizarro punches into Solomon as he yells, Solomon Grundy! And Bizarro tells him, yes, me heard. Solomon then grabs a table and cracks it across Bizarro's head, and Jason shouts, Stand down, Bizarro! And Bizarro says, Down is opposite of help. As Bizarro looks up, he sees Solomon holding both Jason and Artemis by their throats, and he begins to gather what strength he has left. As he turns his fists into ice blocks, Bizarro rockets forward, punching Solomon, telling him, This is the end of Cinnamon Grumpy. He punches over and over and over, saying, Do not hurt Bizarro's! And Jason screams for Bizarro to stop, and he's going to die if he doesn't stop it. And Artemis tells him, That's enough. It's time to go home. Bizarro turns back with sadness in his eyes, telling them, Me and home. Me here with you. And then he falls on his back. Jason and Artemis run over, and Bizarro's condition becomes even more visible as he asks, Did me do good reds? Jason tells him that he did great, and Artemis says that they would be dead without him. As Bizarro's eyes turn black, he says, Do favor? And Artemis tells him anything. He holds out his hands and he says, Take care. Pop, pop. But before Jason can grab his hand, he lays back down. 
and he takes his last breath. Jason gets up strucken with grief and he shouts, he can't be gone. A Lazarus pit, maybe that'll work. We have to do something. Artemis looks down and drapes a cloth over Bizarro's eyes, stating that they can honor the passing of a hero. Let them not shame his sacrifice with tears. Jason stands there telling her, he wasn't just a big lump of Kryptonian DNA. He was my, my. Artemis reaches down, grabbing Pup Pup, and the two mourn their loss as something begins to float down behind them. They turn back and they're shocked and then knocked out. And Lex looks at Bizarro's body, stating, Intriguing. But as Bizarro was closing his eyes and he was passing on, he began to remember his past. His dad was there and his mother told him to write to them if he ever learns to write. Kara was yelling, You am bestest cousin ever! And Crypto was panting. As Bizarro's crib lifted off to fly around, he thinks, Bizarro family is weird, even by Bizarro standards. When I came to Earth, I made friends. There was Nightlight, Wet Wet, Go Go, Batman, Rope Lady, and Cyborg. But the more that Bizarro thinks, the more he remembers that those weren't his memories. His memories started somewhere else, here in the womb, where God says that Bizarro should die. That moment Bizarro remembers was the moment that Lex had shut down the cloning project, and he told everyone to kill the clones. In the current times, Jason asks, did he really make the right choice? Putting all of their trust into a lunatic like Lex. Seriously, what the hell is he even doing to the body of Bizarro? And Artemis tells him that they had no choice. He was the one who created Bizarro. If anyone can save him, it's the world's preeminent mad scientist. Lex then steps out, telling them, nice talk. The truth is, that thing that you call Bizarro is wholly owned and trademark property of LexCorp. Jason gets up shouting for Lex to call him a thing again, and Artemis stops him, telling him that, Nothing that Lex said was incorrect. We should just listen to what he has to say. Lex tells him, Well, yes, this man the two of you have clearly bonded with, Bizarro. You'll be glad to know that we got his heart beating yet again. At this point, there is a 0.37% chance that I can save him. For anyone else, that would be the impossible. But for me, that's just Tuesday. Lex walks back into his lab and Jason asks if they can see him. And Lex says, Soon, until then, I will leave it to the lawyers to settle the matter of ownership after I've pulled off yet another miracle. Jason leans back and says that this is all his fault. Bizarro's been pushing himself from the start to try and make him happy. And Artemis tells him that Bizarro is not a pet. You can't command him to sit or stay. He is his own person, and if he wants to help, there is nothing that either of them could have done to tell him otherwise. Jason's eyes stating that he can't even imagine what's going on in Bizarro's brain right now at a time like this. And in Bizarro's mind, many images begin to blend together from the time of his beginning. Everything up to the point of when he was in a test tube, wondering if Bizarro is bizarre because he was born this way, or if he would be normal if he had not spent so much time trapped in the womb. He could remember no air, no air and bad, even for Bizarro. There was a panic, and then him. At the time, he didn't know red yet, and it was the most beautiful thing that he'd ever seen. And then he heard the first word spoken to him. It'll be okay, big guy. Trust me. Someone tried to make Bizarro into Superman. He didn't know who, besides what he was told. Then there was her, Red Her. She let Bizarro know that he wasn't alone. Not really alone. She could leave as she wanted, but she chose not to. She taught him letters, and letters became words, and then finally words let thoughts out of Bizarro's head. At this time, he had never seen her, only felt her with Bizarro's heart. When asked, Artemis told him that if she would have to describe herself, it would be like trying to explain the sun to a blind man. But does he see the color of that man's cape? The videos of Superman playing for Bizarro began to roll by, and then Bizarro said, You call red. But outside, while Jason and Artemis try to comfort each other, Bizarro thinks, If Bizarro stop, me will miss them. But they will be okay. Back in the real world, Lex looks down at Bizarro's body and he asks if he remembers him. He thinks back to the times that he spent with a clone during Forever Evil. And then he tells Bizarro, no, you're not him. Lex takes out a syringe of green liquid and says that kryptonite injected into Superman's veins would kill him. But since you're the genetic opposite of him, this could save your life instead. He slams the needle down onto Bizarro's chest, telling him that his friend was murdered before he even reached the deteriorative state. So he's going to give him a chance that his friend never had. His Bizarro never had. Do not screw it up. A short while later, Lex leaves the lab, and Jason says that he's not smiling, so it must be bad news. And Lex says that their friend is going to be fine after a brief period of adjustment. Jason says that, that sounds unnecessarily cryptic, and Lex tells him, not at all. It will become very self-evident when you see him. With Bizarro no longer being of any use to me, I've signed over the paperwork, giving you, Jason, total custody of him. Lex reaches out to shake hands, and Jason says, out of the kindness of your heart, huh? Lex tells him, nothing. 
I do is out of the kindness of my heart. Jason and Artemis then head back into the labs to see Bizarro whistling while putting something together. And Jason says, Hey there, big guy. How is everything? A mature, sophisticated Bizarro looks back and says, Jason and Artemis, what an absolute pleasure it is to see you again, compatriots. While I am grateful for Lex's efforts on my behalf, I feel totally at ease returning to my domicile. Artemis blankly stares and Jason asks, Uh, what? And there you have it. Bizarro is now super smart. Didn't see that coming, did you? Neither did I. The next storyline is quite interesting, and we will be getting to it. And if you want to keep up the date on what is happening with Red Hood and the Outlaws, then please, subscribe to the channel. We would greatly appreciate it. You can also find our Red Hood playlist right over here. And you can find anything else recommended by YouTube right over here. And I will see you next time at Comic Storian.